inventory plummeted, but there's a good reason why. And the wind continues to be in the sales. Get it? Wind? Sales? Sorry. Dad joke. My takeaway was how strong of a week it was when compared to other similar weeks. Buyer demand? Yeah, that one's still strong to extremely strong as well. In this video, we're going to go over the single family condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update and then talk about some, uh, well, relevant current events. I just started putting together the March data for the April market report. There are some interesting tidbits in there. For example, year over year, single family home prices are up more than 8%. Be on the lookout for that video. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then note I'm here to help. Two quick highlights. We buy houses all over Massachusetts. Cash, fast, or slow closing timelines. If you know of anyone that's looking to sell and doesn't want to go through the hassles of a traditional sales process, wants to sell as is, maybe the house needs a lot of repairs, and then have them visit cashofferma.com. And speaking of good old traditional sales way, right? We're now offering a program of 1% instead of the traditional five or six percent do you know of anyone that's thinking about selling their house and is wanting to possibly save tens of thousands of dollars on our economy package then i would love to chat with you let's jump into the single family market stats yep inventory plummeted this week to 2892 single family homes on the market in the state of massachusetts we now have 1.6 percent fewer houses on the market today than just 28 days ago Sellers should not be celebrating, though, because there's a reason as to why this big jump, well, I guess jump pack, in inventory levels this week. Inventory, it went down strictly because it was Easter week. But when you look at it this way, it wasn't all that extreme. We now have 172 fewer houses on the market when compared to this same week last year. And... 422 more houses on the market today than compared to today back in 2022. Now, I can promise you that this will be short-lived because Easter doesn't fall on the same week every single year, so it makes for a little bit of, well, year-over-year -year data confusion. You can really see how the decrease in new listings was not out of the ordinary when you look at it from Easter week. Compare this week's blue line to the data point of the red line that's next week. They're pretty much exactly equal. This week, we listed 614 single family homes in the state of Massachusetts. This is 396 units or 39.2% more than the same week back in 2023. But remember, this is Easter week. Now that four week rolling average is 914 units and it was another strong week for under agreements in Massachusetts. This week, we put 877 houses under agreement. Now this is a new 2024 high this week, we put 42 units or 4.6% fewer homes under agreement than the same week last year. We put 919 single family houses under agreement. Now that four week rolling average, that's 805 units. So when compared to last year's markets, new listings, they were down by 39.2% while under agreements, they were down by 4.6%. There were 689 single family houses that closed last week for an average sales price of 810 thousand dollars and a median sales price of six hundred and thirty thousand dollars sales levels compared to the same week last year were actually up by 0.2 percent as there were 688 single family homes that sold this week last year for an average sales price of seven hundred and forty eight thousand dollars now months of inventory this is how we determine what type of market that we're in zero to five months that's considered a seller's market with the closer you get to zero, the stronger the seller's market that it is. This week, months of inventory had actually dropped to 1.57 months from last week's 1.63 months. 1.57 months this week is compared to the 1.6 months this week last year. Again, the data is going to be a little well shaky for the next two weeks. This week, it's down because of Easter. But next week, it's going to be up by a huge amount because, well, it's compared to Easter of last year. So just keep that in mind for this week and next week. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a house, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now onto the condo market. We have 2,036 condos on the market as of Monday. Now this is 4.7% more than the inventory levels on the market just 28 days ago. The inventory gap in the condo market though, that also took a dive. We now have 10 more units on the market today than today last year. 
Meanwhile, we have 241 more units compared to the inventory levels back in 2022. Now, the higher inventory levels will be back again next week, just like the single family market. There were 373 condos that came on the market last week with that four week rolling average of 493 units. And 373 units listed was 171 units or 31.4% less than the 468 condos that came on the market the same week back in 2023. But compare the blue line this week to the red line next week. The new listings didn't go toe to toe like it did back in the Massachusetts single family market. This makes me believe that the inventory levels, well, they're going to snap back much higher in the condo market next week. Under agreements were down, but not by much. This week, we put 405 under units under agreement. Now, this 405 condo sales was 16 units or 3.8% less than last year when we put 421 condos under agreement. That four-week rolling average for under agreements is 421 units. So 31.4% fewer listings came on the market this week compared to last year, while selling 3.8% fewer condos. There were 380 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $742,000 and a median sales price of $567,000. This same week last year, there were 392 condos that sold. So sales levels, they were actually down by 3.1%. Months of inventory had actually increased 2.54 months from last week's 2.49 months. This is compared to the months of inventory of 2.35 months this week last year. The months of inventory increasing our condos. That was a little bit of a surprise with the inventory going down. But any chance you can do me a huge favor, can you hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference with the YouTube channels and plays with that algorithm. And subscribing, well, if you haven't done that and you like the content, then that one doesn't hurt either. So I appreciate you considering subscribing. Time to talk about interest rates though. This week, interest rates, well, they're up. It's been up and down, up and down pretty much every week. What's interesting is that when you look at it from a month standpoint, then they really haven't changed that much. The interesting thing about interest rates is that there was constant talk about how interest rates were going to go down. But Fannie Mae last week, very quietly, very quietly revised their guidance on interest rates. They now feel that interest rates are no longer going to dip below 6% in 2024. So don't wait on interest rates to go down in order to buy a house because there are a couple reasons why actually. The first reason is that it might not actually happen. The second reason is that there is a swarm of buyers also waiting for rates to go down. If they enter the market, then that 8% year over year appreciation rate that we talked about a little bit earlier, that's gonna be tiny in comparison to how much housing prices are going to jump. Buy now, take a look at this. This talks about the migration trends on a county by county basis from April 1st, 2020 to July 1st, 2023. So how did Massachusetts do? I'll take it. You can't see Massachusetts because we haven't really seen a big change in our population shift. It's all white, not red, not green. People are not leaving Massachusetts in groves, which I do find a little interesting. The top three counties with the largest population increases were Collin, Texas, Wake County, North Carolina, and Hillsborough, Florida. Now, the top three counties with the largest population decreases were Bronx County, Kings County, and Queens County, all in New York. New York's in trouble. I wouldn't touch a piece of property in New York with a 10-foot pole. And this, this was crazy. More than one in three home purchases were made with cash in February of 2024. I found this just be crazy that 34% of all purchases, they were cash. And this is within striking distance of the record height of 38% that was set back in 2013. From a financial standpoint, I'm not sure it makes a whole lot of sense to buy all cash and not utilize the power of leverage, but what would I know? And heck, maybe those people buy cash now and then leveraging right after they close. Real quick, here's a feel good story. I did a squatters video a couple weeks ago. Then the New York story hit that the squatter storyline it actually blew up you know that one the lady in queens who uh, inherited a house and then she was waiting to sell it and then squatters moved in and then she went there to try to get squatters squatters out and they actually arrested her you remember that story well that story actually helped shed some light on how big of an issue that this squatting thing actually is but did you see this guy he was what is known as a migrant influencer who has amassed a half million followers. He actually bragged about receiving stacks of cash and where he may have finally been pushed 
to the forefront is that he actually got on TikTok and did a video urging illegal entry into the US and promoting squatting. He said in his video that actually encouraged people to invade American homes under squatting laws, quote unquote, I learned that there's a law that says if a house is not inhabited, then we can take it. And here in the United States, terrain deformation also applies. And I think that will be my next business, invade abandoned houses. He was arrested. Like I said, it was a feel good story. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Well, again, my name is Jeff Chubb. Whether you are thinking about buying or selling a house in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then it would be a true pleasure to speak with them. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate you just passing along my contact information. You can visit youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.